Okay, I just want to share with you um, a few tricks for um, selecting data and viewing data in different forms. So in ArcMap and ArcPro, there are different ways of viewing and selecting your data. You can look, well, you can look at maps, you can look at the tables, you can look at the data sets in catalog, um, you can look at you know statistical summaries and histograms. Um, but we can create subsets of the data by um, writing these simple queries using SQL and there's other um, languages that you can use, but we can basically um, create subsets and um, sub-selections of our data sets, either through the attribute table, you know, through the databases or from the maps themselves. These queries that we're doing um, are just a way of selecting data. It's not running tools. It's not fundamentally changing the data in any way. It's just choosing some of it. And there's four basic ways to make selections. You can do it manually by just clicking on things or going into the attribute table and using you know, shift select. Um, you can use set algebra. If you're dealing with populations or something, you might want to choose all the states that have a population greater than or a population density less than or something like that. Boolean algebra um, is making selections like this and this. Um, I'd like land ownership to be um, you know, private and, um, uh, I don't know, um, land cover type, you know, prairie <laughs> or something like that. Um, and then those are things that you would do to the attributes. And then there are spatial selection operations like choose everything um, outside of this feature, choose everything within 100 meters of this feature. Those are spatial selections. So in, um, in Arc Pro, you can make selections manually by using the Select tool. They're on the Map tab in the Selection pane. Um, you can select just by clicking and dragging um, a series of points or lines or whatever it is. Um, you can just click within a feature, polygon feature, to select it. You can go into the Attribute table and click in the far left column to select certain lines. Um, and then remember, this the clear selection is this little clear box here. Selecting by attributes, we can um, do both Boolean and set algebra queries. Um, let me just go through here. So SQL, uh, SQL stands for Standard Query Language. You've used it before. It probably sounds more complicated than it is. Um, set algebra and basic Boolean operators like, um, equal to, greater than, less than, you get the idea. Boolean statements um, are binary outputs, um, true, false, and you can use the Boolean operators and an or. Okay, so just as a quick recap, examples of Boolean lob logic. If we have these three sets, A, B, and C, um, this would be a selection of A or B. It's inclusive. Um, and then A and B is more of an intersection. It's exclusive, meaning it's going to be a smaller result. So where A exists and B exists. Um, not A or B. So you would take A or B and then the opposite of it. Um, you can read through these and hopefully make sense of that. Um, we use it pretty often, I should say. So select by attribute. We've got states. Um, I've got the state attribute table open, we've got the name of the states, and we've got population field. Select by attributes, we're in the state US data set. We're going to create a new expression, and then you just write it as a sentence where name is equal to Arizona, add another clause, or name is equal to Illinois. So if we apply that, we should have a selection of Arizona and Illinois, where name is equal to Arizona or name is equal to uh, Illinois. Now we could add another one, say, and the population in 2010 is greater than 13 million. If I can keep up with myself. <laughs> apply that. And it changes our selection. Only Arizona has a population greater than 13 million. 
Okay, does that make sense? That's a select by attribute. And you can make these queries as complicated or as simple as you want. You could just keep going all day long if you wanted to. Okay, a spatial query is different. Uh, spatial queries have to do with the geometry and, and where you are, the proximity of things to other things. So if we wanted to deal with a riparian area, we might want to select all timber within, say, 20 meters on either side of a channel. So we have a channel polyline, and then we have a point data set that has the location of trees. So we could either run a buffer that's buffering the channel to 20 meters on either side, and then we could do a clip or an intersect or something like that. Or we could say select all harvest, all timber features, point features, that are within 20 meters of the channel polyline. So if we do a select by location, it's basically going to create a 20 meter buffer and then select all points that fall within that area. So choosing features based on their location relative to other features. Um, what's fun about this is you uh, can you can change up the way your your whatever your selection method is. So you can select features from, you can add to currently selected features, you can remove from currently selected features, but I'll show you some of the other options for how you can set up your selection method. Let's run through an example. How many cities are there in Utah? So here I have the states and I have cities. So select by location. You want to set this first. The selecting features are the states. How many things are within Utah? So that we need um, that to be states. Cities within the states is going to select everything because we have, you know, 48 states in our map. What we want to do is select Utah to make this work. What's great about select by location is now it will only function on the selected feature. So how many cities are within the states U.S. but we have Utah selected and it turns out that 381 of these city points um, are in Utah. Now a quick caveat, is that the actual number of cities in Utah? It would depend on how you define what a city is, and not really us, but where did we get this city data? Um, how did they define what a city is? Uh, is it all cities, you know, with a certain population? Does it have to do with incorporation? So you really have to take your spatial data with a grain of salt. You can't definitively say there are 381 cities in Utah. How old is the data? Have new cities been incorporated since then? There's a lot of uncertainty. So just be careful when you're, you know, presenting your results. Okay, let's run through another one. How many states does the Mississippi River flow through? So now our selecting feature needs to be the rivers, right? But we want it to specifically be the Mississippi. So we can use a select by attribute and select from the rivers shapefile where the name is equal to Mississippi. Because remember, this isn't one line. It's a bunch of little line segments. There's probably, I don't know, 50 different segments that make up this river. But now our selecting feature, the Mississippi, and we want to put the states, US, as our features, but the relationship now can be intersect. So how many states touch this selected set of polylines? And there's your answer. So that's how many states does the Mississippi flow through. It's using select by location, and all you're doing is choosing things. You can clear the selection and try again if you don't like the results. So why wouldn't you like the results? We're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, so remember, select by location and select by attribute are both on the map tab. You can select things manually and remember to clear, clear, clear your results. Um, all you have to do is run this again, you know, if you make a mistake. Uh, so I'm going to show you a, a data set where we're looking at census blocks for um, Logan City. But um, I want to show you what the different um, selection methods are first. So input features, census blocks, this relationship here. So if our selecting feature is the municipal boundary of Logan, and we have census blocks for all of Cache County, and we want to know um, which census blocks fall within the city limits, let's look at the different options we have for this spatial relationship field. We can, we can see which uh, census blocks intersect Logan City, 
um, I don't know what intersect 3D is, within a geodesic uh, distance, within a distance planar, uh, within a 3D distance, um, how many are um, completely, so you have to think about the, the direction this goes in. If we have our selecting feature of Logan City, we'd be saying um, how many of these features completely contain the census blocks. It's kind of a reverse order and you wouldn't do that. So sometimes um, some of these won't be usable. Um, are within is the opposite and that would work. Um, touches the boundary of, shares a line segment with, has their center in. This one's really important because the boundaries for the census blocks might not line up perfectly with Logan City. So let's look at how some of these turn out. Here's the census blocks underneath in these shades of, of kind of greenish blue. And then in pink is the Logan City limits. If we run a select by location um, where the census blocks intersect Logan City, look at what we get. We get like these crazy big census blocks that run up the mountain and um, some stuff that's kind of hanging off the side here because some little tiny part of one of these um, census blocks maybe overlaps a little bit with Logan City limits. But that's um, a difference of how these two different data sets were sourced. Um, Logan City maybe um, created this data set and drew it you know, from some kind of a paper map and maybe um, the Census Bureau you know, had their own source for their data. So they aren't, the, the boundary here isn't completely shared. So another option might be to clear that and try again, boundary touches. And we end up with even weirder results. Um, still not quite right. They're definitely not the census blocks within Logan City. But if you use has their center in, we get a pretty clean result. Why? Because um, ARC is calculating the geometric center of each census block and then choosing the ones whose center are inside Logan City limits, which works out really well because then we don't have to deal with the fact that these boundaries don't completely line up and we get a much more realistic result. So in between all these experiments, clearing selection and just changing that relationship method and trying it again. Lots of fun tools in uh, select by location. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know.